God bless you, brothers and sisters, and welcome to Godspeed Magazine Live. In this month's Parents Issue, we've been exploring how God is protecting the role of godly parenting in America. Imagine legal actions being taken that tell you, the parents, that the school officials and state education board are now going to begin making choices for your children. These choices are going to include indoctrinating your children into a culture of aggressive sex education, homosexuality, and abortion. How would you respond? How are you responding? The shocking truth is it's already happening in multiple states, including Delaware and California. The book addresses things like sex games, sex toys, vibrators, handcuffs, and ropes. The new sex ed program is too inappropriate, adding the curriculum sexualizes children as young as kindergarten age. Last week, state education officials overhauled its sexual education guidance for public school teachers with gender identity and safe sex practices, amongst other subjects being covered. Now they say uh, the main one that they are having a hard time with is the LGBTQ inclusive language and safe trafficking context, which will be covered. Some parents saying it's all too explicit for kids this young and too graphic, especially some of the books. Now, one of the books that they seem to be having a problem with is this one titled Sex, All You Need to Know. Tuberty and all that stuff. Again, parents talking about the graphic nature, the graphic images and descriptive language they're upset about and they don't want their kids to learn about this in school. She calls herself a sex educator, uh, and I don't know if I would use that similar title, but we'll go with it for the sake of the argument. She says it's important to understand how male pleasure and that In Delaware, LGBTQ organizations who believe parental rights should be given to school officials are being pushed back by outraged parents. In California, God is defending warriors in the faith to defend our K-12 children from institutional perversion at a level you can't imagine. Now joining us are Greg Burtz, Director of Capital Engagement from the California Family Council, and Stephanie Michelle Yates from Informed Parents. Greg, Stephanie, welcome, and thank you for being here with us. You're welcome. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, Greg, because Godspeed Magazine is about God in action, we'd be honored if you'd help us open this particular episode in prayer. Absolutely. Lord Jesus, we uh, we are desperate for you, and yes. Lord, we um, we need you. Uh, Lord, we are we know that you've um, put us on this earth to be salt and light, to be your ambassadors. And Lord, um, we just ask for your Holy Spirit to be with us. Uh, we ask for empowerment, Lord. We ask for guidance, and um, we just uh, we know that we need uh, your wisdom. Um, in these, uh, as we engage in the culture and trying to show uh, who the character of God is, yes. Lord, um, you are love, you are justice, you are goodness, you are holiness. And Lord, Amen. we just want to represent you accurately uh, to draw yes. people to you. And so we just uh, ask that you guide our conversations today, that they would glorify you, um, and that other people would be encouraged and uh, inspired. And your in your precious name, Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that, guys. This is a time to be vigilant and alert in Christ. And when we return from this quick commercial break, you'll learn how quickly the forces of darkness are advancing against our children, and how Jesus is calling His people, and that's you, forward. You turn on the news, and it's all political warfare. It seems like the media is always raging about problems with everyone, everywhere, about everything. I love Godspeed Magazine because it's about hope. It's about God being our hope. Hope in DC. Hope for persecuted Christians. Hope for the impoverished nations. Hope for the unborn child. And hope for the least, the last, and the lost. Because they focus on God in action. And that's what I love.
blessings and welcome back. Before we jump into our interview, uh, I think it would really help Greg if you could kind of, you or both of you guys, Stephanie, if you guys could help our audience understand the context of the nightmare attack we're sort of experiencing here in California, because from what we've heard across the country, a lot of people don't really have a clue what's happening. So if you could sort of put it in context, it would really help. Sure. Um, well, I work up here with the California Family Council. I say up here, uh, I work up at the Capitol. Sacramento. Uh, and I've had experience working at the Capitol for several years, and now I've been working for this organization that's advocating for biblical values. And so I'm kind of like a watchdog, uh, watching legislation that's coming through, uh, standing up and, and speaking to the media and kind of giving the biblical uh, worldview when stuff uh, is introduced that uh, obviously it is harmful to people and, you know, contradicts uh, a biblical value. So we've been watching um, sex ed that's being introduced. Uh, into California several years ago, there was a bill passed in 2015 called the uh, California Healthy Youth Act. Um, Healthy and Youth sometimes Act. Sometimes it's called Comprehensive Sex Ed, right? And it's really uh, when it was passed, it you didn't see the details, but the Department of Ed has been working on the details for a couple of years, and they came out with this new framework to they're going to promote into individual school districts and they, and they finally showed the specifics. Not only the uh, the guidance they plan to give school districts, but they started recommending individual books. And when you see the content, then you see exactly what they had intended all along. And it is, it is graphic, uh, it is intended for younger and younger ages. It really is a part of the sexual revolution to reframe how we all think about gender and sexual orientation, and they, uh, it's not biblical at all, <laughs> and they intend to start uh, introducing it to kids at the earliest ages, because that's when they're most impressionable. So that kind of gives you a little context for uh, our discussion today. It, it's brutal. And, and Stephanie, um, I guess I could, we could sort of combine this. I was gonna ask you in general, um, when you launched Informed Parents, in response, uh, was it in response to a calling from God? Was it just outrage? In seeing this, I'm amazed they had the audacity to call it healthy youth and and then put on top of it this thing they're trying to slide under the noses of all the parents. But so did you create informed parents out of just pure fury and fear or did God kind of come to you? Was there a prayer, a vision? How did it start? I would definitely say it came from the Lord because I was informed by my pastor, Jack Hibbs. He um, had been telling us for quite a few years that it was a pornographic sex ed coming. I'd go home, I'd search, I couldn't find anything. Wow. And then finally last summer, or not summer, last, um, like at the beginning of last year, things started leaking out from all around the country. So even though it's mandatory in California, it's not mandatory anywhere else in the country. There are some states now that it is, but as of last year, we were the first state. And um, I would just see the things that were coming coming on, um, just the things that were being shown. And I just continued to have a burden and I was sharing. Nobody was commenting, nobody was saying anything. I told my husband, I, it's just, how are people not so upset about what's going on? How is it that they're not scared about what's going on? Maybe they think I'm some, fruit loop now you know and so he said create a group and i'm like okay fine i'll create a group he said name it informed parents of california I, I was trying to find something fun and creative and he came up with that and it was perfect and um but i did have a sense of a burden that's growing and growing and i would say a year before i was asking the lord like what is your purpose for my life I, you say you have a purpose for everybody's life what Amen. is mine because i'm just here at home feel like i'm not doing anything and um that burden was so strong and i finally came to my husband i said we're the ones that are believers. We're Christians. We should be doing something and taking the action, Come on. not waiting for other people to do it. Yes. And so the group started and I started going to meetings and I started going to um, information meetings and also school board meetings. And we met people, other parents and stuff. And it just went from there. That's incredible. I, I, it's so amazing how God will put that kind of pressure, that sort of burden on you. You can feel it pulling at you. 
And, and it's almost like uh, that one song that talks about if not us, then who kind of thing, you know? <laughs> if we don't do it, then who's gonna be the ones that stand up? Um, I think in some cases too, it has a lot to do with, you don't realize that they're trying to show your, your kids what you would consider like pornographic hustler images of sexuality in kindergarten. And when you see how intense that is, it just sort of shocks you out of your mind. Like you, you can't imagine that they're going that far, that they've already gone that far. Um, and uh, Greg, you're the one I think uh, you stated that the something I read said the California health curriculum being proposed for our K through 12 children, quote, makes us sick. And so for both of you, how anti God is this framework? Well, I mean, God uh, created sexuality to be enjoyed by adult married couples, right? Amen. And so the, the sex ed, um, sexuality uh, is being introduced to the students to say the opposite. <laughs> um, there is no hint of abstinence for marriage. There, the, you get into the, the content, it's really introducing young children to sex itself, um, teaching them how different uh, behaviors. Uh, they, they talk about it being comprehensive and, and accurate. Well, I suppose it is, <laughs> uh, at least some of it, but who would ever think of introducing, you know, young children to the details of sex? And I mean the details. Um, I mean, we started, people, one of the issues we had with just dealing with the press is that we couldn't get them to actually show the content. Uh, we, we, we would describe it as pornographic or graphic, and then the other side, you know, would trot out their experts that would say was, well, this has been reviewed by our experts, and, you know, this is, uh, you know, this is what kids need to know to avoid risky behavior. Uh, but it was only when we finally got them to look at the books and read them, and we flipped up and showed the pictures, and, and I, I spent several hours talking to reporters and just reading through the curriculum with them, and you could tell by their reactions uh, that was not what they were expecting. Oh man, I'm telling you what, I, w I was so horrified. And, and this is exactly why at this moment right now, no decent human being would discuss what they're trying to put, what is already now in the framework, right? For California, did they vote on May 8th? This went through, right? There's, there's now in the framework things that we literally cannot say in front of your children or show or talk, we can't use the words. I mean, it's, it's so bad. The specific sex practices, all this stuff are so bad. You literally can't say it out loud in front of children. Yes, no, we cannot say it in front of children. And um, these books, I'll show them to you. This the um, outside of them. I have to put these books up away when I'm not using them because my kids can easily grab them. They look like a storybook for them. Yeah, one says it's changing you. And the other one, what's the title on the second one, Stephanie? This one here, it's not the... <laughs> The stork. It's not the stork that does it. So destroying innocent models of old parenting. Greg, let's bring you in on this. What, how, how would you, anything to add on how our viewers can get involved, how believers can get involved? Well, I think one of the main things they do is they need to get informed. And so uh, our website, californiafamily.org, we are writing stories about the curriculum, about what's in it. Um, we are notifying folks about legislation that's uh, being introduced uh, that we have a, actually a parent who has uh, put together an idea for some legislation uh, and this is a, a it's actually an amendment to the healthy youth act that actually requires if they're going to teach sex ed in elementary school then it requires the lessons to be put online and it requires the uh, parents to have an opt-in meaning they you got to get permission to have your kid in the class. That's the only the only change. It's minor, but that's something positive we can advocate for. True. Um, and so we have a legislator who is uh, has introduced that bill, and now we just have to promote that uh, among the public. Um, and, and the other thing to do is you got to go to your school district and find out what they're teaching. Don't and don't be satisfied with summaries or overviews you want to see the actual lesson you want to see the, all the supplemental materials you want to see the videos that they're going to show 
That's huge. Ask for everything. Thank because you. what happens, they know if you see everything, you might opt out, right? And so, and when you opt out, that's money to them. So you parents just got to be good to them. Uh, and that, and that means you, you just got to be insistent on seeing all of it. Amen. Uh, Can I add something to that? Yeah, absolutely, Stephanie. This is one of the curriculums. It's almost 300 pages. So if they hand you a little tiny packet of something, that's not, they're not giving you everything. Well done. I, those are the kind of things I think are so important is a contextual ability to function in an intelligent way. Like you just gave everybody a great way to know how to do it. And both Greg, Stephanie, I appreciate you guys so much. And I appreciate your kindness uh, and dignity towards all of this without becoming passive and silent. You know, we have Jesus the warrior with a whip in the temple. We have Jesus the lamb of God. And I feel like people decide that God is either alpha or omega and forget that God is in fact alpha and omega. He doesn't stand down and he's also got that kind of composure that is godly. And so thank you for being a reflection of that. I wanna bless you both. Thank you both for coming on the show and just keep it up, keep up the work. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you for having us. And our one of our sayings is that we will stop at nothing to protect our kids. So Amen. I, I can't see, I mean, as you can see, I'm juggling everything and I work from home too. And oh. it a lot. And I appreciate that you're okay with my kids coming in. It's the first time they've done this in an interview, but we can do this. Amen. Because God's giving us the provision to be able to do what we need to do because our ch it's we're in high red alert right now of what's going on with our kids. Oof. And if I can stress that to everybody, don't think you can teach them better at home because you don't know what is happening in those classrooms, what's being said five days a week for seven hours a day. You don't know how to undo it. And the other thing is that we spend, when it's time to come home, it's morning times, it's get up, get ready for school, drop off, pick up, let's get homework, let's get sports, let's get bath, bed, and then how much time do we really have to know what's going on at that school and to undo what they're learning? We don't. Amen. Amen. And kids do not, you. you can't undo what kids learn in their own culture. If they learn it with a bunch of their friends around, you're dead. I mean, as a parent, the, the influence you can have, we've seen this, that's why the best thing is get your kids around more godly kids in life groups and church camps and anything. The more influence they can have poured in from God in groups, the more they see that, in fact, the culture of God is the true culture, is the truth. So thank you, thank you. Guys, if you consider yourself a warrior in Christ, when we return, we're gonna be talking about action, how you individually can get involved with God in action, and we've got some additional stuff for you, so stay tuned. You turn on the news and it's all political warfare. It seems like the media is always raging about problems with everyone, everywhere, about everything. I love Godspeed Magazine because it's about hope. It's about God being our hope. Hope in DC, hope for persecuted Christians. Hope for the impoverished nations, hope for the unborn child. And hope for the least, the last, and the lost. Because they focus on God in action. And that's what I love. Ecclesia, church, Believers, welcome back to Godspeed Magazine Live. If you know that you're part of the body of Christ, then here are the action steps. Here's how we get involved. Those of you who stand, this is how. Number one, go to informedparents.org and pray. Ask God how he would call you in to get involved. And I just want to bring us to scripture and remember Jesus heavily warned us heavily warned us not to cause children to sin. In Matthew 18, six through seven, in the New King James Version, Jesus says, but whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depths of the sea. This is the Lamb of God. This is the Prince of Peace talking. It'd be better to be drowned in the sea than do this. Woe to the world because of offenses, for offenses must come, but woe to the man 
by whom the offense comes. Jesus is, I can't think of this being a more direct warning. Very next thing, the next action step we can jump into is share like a warrior. And that means you share like a warrior. How? Tell friends about the all out war on parental rights that you're hearing about right here, right now across America. Read this month's parents issue, the parents issue of Godspeed magazine. I'll jump back here real quick, just so you can see it, that the parents issue of Godspeed magazine, read it. So when you go to talk to your friends, it's easy to share. It's easy to talk about the stuff going on in Delaware with Nicole Tice, who fought a regulation seeking to give school officials the right to take away parental rights. So the schools could teach your kids anything they want. The parents don't get, they have no say. It outraged people all over that side of the country. And now California is doing the same thing, outraging people with the changes in our framework for the Board of Education. Action step number three, you can tell us to act. I wanna encourage you to say, Jeremy, you're the publisher of Godspeed Magazine, you act. And I'm saying to you, yes, yes I will. I need to know that you care. I'm asking you and encouraging you directly to vote with your wallet or ask people around you to vote with their wallet. What does that mean? If even 40 of you tell us to raise funds for informed parents, that's Stephanie Yates, who you just saw, who's out there as a mom struggling to work a job and do all this stuff and juggle her kids and still stand up for the rights of parents in America, still stand up for godly values in America, this is where the fight is. It is the front line. If we lose the families, if we lose the children, it won't matter what you win later. So specifically in this case, if you want us to act on behalf of informed parents to help Stephanie do this work so she can hire a babysitter and not work at a job and focus, if we can boost her up and help her and fund her, all you need to do is email us info at godspeedmag.com. Info at godspeedmag.com. Then tell us, I'm ready to subscribe to help inform parents. Subscribe. Your annual subscription, when you subscribe, we will give all the proceeds to uh, informed parents. Just as an example, if 40 of you subscribed, it would create thousands of dollars of funding for them. So it's very simple. Just write us info at godspeedmag.com. I wanna stand with informed parents. I'm ready to subscribe and the proceeds will go directly to them. I wanna thank all of you who've made such great comments and have been reading the parents issue. I love that you love the content. I love to hear what else you love. By the way, I wanna make sure that all of you try the next gen Bible technology that's in there. Look in next gen Bible, the article in here, and look for the way the Ark of the Covenant will come into real life onto your phone and float around and you could touch it. Just go to next gen Bible. You can read the magazine online. You can read it in the app on your phone, however you'd like to read it. But most of all, I want to thank each and every one of you who are with us in Godspeed magazine. Our goal is that you would read, pray, act, and become the story. So God bless you. And if you bring the full gospel of Jesus Christ, Godspeed. <laughs>